to be sudden onset. Onset means beginning. Sudden onset of dyspnea or the breathlessness. The breathlessness. And along with chest pain. Now think of it, the patient is your neighbor and you are sitting watching TV and then someone calls you, they come fast and then they say, Kare, he was fine watching the TV and achanak chest pain shuva. What will you think? You will never think of pneumothorax. Right? Our, our mind goes for This is what is called as the DD, differential diagnosis. Hypertension, well, hypertension never gives sudden onset. What is the sudden onset? The first thing what comes in mind is heart attack. First thing what comes in mind is heart attack. So it is what is called as a myocardial infarction. When I say DD, DD stands for differential diagnosis. Right? Differential diagnosis. This is the reason that instead of going, going straight away for that, okay, these are the things of pneumothorax, no, we are going as if this is a medicine lecture. So myocardial infarction, that would be the first thing which will come in your mind. Myocardial infarction, that is the technical name of heart attack. Okay. Second thing which should really come, that is it a panic attack? For myocardial infarction, remember one thing, that whenever it occurs, the classical picture would be that the, there is always pain radiating to either shoulder, right, shoulder, or the scapular region on the back side. Right? Pain would be radiating. Don't don't worry about the last lecture. Focus for today. Focus for today. Don't worry about it. This is an independent topic, so it has got nothing to do with the last last time stop. Okay. So coming back to this panic attack, because this panic attack is also very important. Has someone heard some bad news or very good news? Will you join now? We are we are discussing about pneumothorax. And in pneumothorax, you know this part that it is the pleural space, the fluid in the pleural space, which is important to keep the lungs. Inflated, right? And and when they, if the air enters into the space, it is what is called as the pneumothorax. The symptoms are sudden onset, breathlessness, and chest pain. Right? Myocardial infarction. You asked about angina pectoris. Very right. This would be so. Is it a panic attack? The third thing, which is angina pectoris. Angina pectoris. The difference between myocardial infarction and angina pectoris is very subtle, right? Subtle means very clear, very slight difference. The myocardial infarction is when actually the heart is not getting the blood. When the coronary arteries, they have stopped giving the blood because of the total occlusion. So here is the coronary artery. This is the muscle, heart muscle, which is getting supplied. The blood supply stops. So, infarction is loss of blood supply. Myo is muscle, cardial, cardial is heart. Right? When the muscle of the heart is not getting the blood supply, it is called as a myocardial infarction or full-fledged heart attack. Correct? When it is angina, I just scrolled up. Okay. When it is angina, angina you can see it is like cry of the heart. I am not getting, I am getting less blood, more round. Do something. Right. So, in case of angina, the pain it it is quite severe, but when it comes to say myocardial infarction, it starts radiating. Right. In cardiology, we'll be discussing this thing in full detail. That is the complete, literally taking to both the cases and how to identify clinically and then how to go for the management. The fourth thing which is really very important is thing which will be taking at length and that is called as the pulmonary embolism. Pulmonary embolism. Embolism means, you just remember that it is like a clot which has been released and it, is, it has gone into the pulmonary system and then what really happens. 
all these things, and obviously the, the new motorbikes. New motorbikes. In all these cases, the patients they will be different. So we need to see that. Someone has said that sudden onset breathlessness. So that person, dekhne mein kaisa hai? What is he up? Is he thin? Is he fat? Is he obese? Right? Is he a smoker? So few quick questions. The moment you see and you ask two three questions, and you will be very near to the diagnosis. Right? So here, these are like differential diagnoses always. So what will you do? History. History is quick questions because this is like now much easier, right? If you are in hospital, patient has come, then ECG. Now I am putting this radiology or the X-ray chest, X-ray chest number three. If your diagnosis is good, if you are diagnosed that this is a patient of pneumothorax, how can you say gunshot? Right? Someone is shot. Stab hua, stabbing kiya. That is when you find that yes, within, matlab, dekhte, dekhte, patients' breathlessness is increasing. Don't even order for x ray chest. Straight away start the treatment. For pneumothorax, it is said that consider every pneumothorax patient is a tension pneumothorax. You see the difference between both of them. But tension pneumothorax is that within minutes, person can die. So that's why it is always considered that once you diagnose that this is a pneumothorax, treat it as a tension pneumothorax, so that patient would never die. So let's start with, the, right, we'll come back to this history part again. So here is the types. There are two types, two major types. So one, what is called as the spontaneous. Spontaneous means achanak. Right? It's called as the spontaneous pneumothorax. And second one, which is very dangerous and life-threatening, it is the tension pneumothorax. So this is life-threatening. And when we use the word progressive, progressive means with every every second the condition is determined. Right? So this is progressive. Progressive breathlessness or progressive dyspnea. This right? is breathless. So this is a hallmark of the brain. With every breath, every time patient breathes, and then he is into pain more and more. So this is this is quite all right. First, we go towards the spontaneous. Spontaneous is this is now one sentence of theory. When in the books it is said that there is a rupture. Of sub plural lab. In exam, in viva, anything asked, you will be writing this. But what is it? For that, ah, here it is. For that, I took a picture of this, this one wheel. Now, have you noticed this thing? Bye bar, car me hawa bharte, tire me. So a small portion it bulges out. Small portion it bulges out. Over here, you can see that entire wheel is fine, but this portion has bulged out. Yeah, it is swollen, right? I, I like the word, so I write swollen. Right? So it is swollen, it is bulged. Same thing can happen in ducks, right? Can happen. So this is. When, when if we, if we really draw a line like this, a small portion it is bulged. This is what is called as the blab. This is called as the blab. Now see, this is sub-plural blab. Sub-plural blab. This means this particular bulge, it is just underneath the plura. So the plura is, is going like this. Right? That is the sub sub plural blab. Now this blab, it can be deep inside also, which is called as the bula. It is called as the bula. But I'll show you the x-rays also, CT scan also. So if this thing ruptures, 
this thing ruptures, if you really zoom this thing, right? so here is this Takura, and here is here is that bulge. Now, because it is bulge, literally like that car tire, so that that particular won't it affect the flow of mineral fluid? Not really, not really, because fluid I will always take the shape, right? It will take the shape, so so it will easily be there. Bulge is in everybody's now. No, it is not. It is not. This is abnormal, right? And we'll just see that when it occurs. Interesting questions. So just give me a minute. But this bulb, that bulge. So this this portion is is now weak, and if it bursts, so immediately it will put the air into the lungs. Is it filled with blood or pus? Not at all. It is filled with air. It's filled with air. Those up in the car ka tire is that bulge, right? The things what you say that swollen part is that thing filled with fluid? Nahi na, wahan bhi to hawa hai na. Is air only, correct? So just think it like, what if is car ke tire pe apne cover chada diya? Right? A cover chada. So now if this thing bulbs, where this air will go? That air will go between that tire and and the and the cover. Na? Bus. So that's that's what really happens. Our pleura is like a covering, right? So you can consider that apne iske upar, apne iske upar ek pura se suppose cover chada. So when then that inside would bulge, it will break. So that that will be between between the car tire and the cover. So is it like water bubble happens on skin after skin burns? Oh well, well, well. That is that is. You can think like that, but I won't uh, say yes to that because what we said is about the skin. So skin has got right, all seven layers. Out of this, the top layer, the top layer which is called as the epidermis. Right? Epidermis. In epidermis, there is this top layer, stratum corneum. Or stratum corneum. This is like keratin, and over here, over here, the granulosa, spinosum, basale, all these layers they keep on producing the keratin, and it forms a water barrier. So what happens when when the person has got sixty? I'm sorry, forty percent, more than forty percent burn. Straight away, this layer is burnt, and then water, water level, right? The water barrier that is broken. So now the inside water starts coming up, and that is what happens in the form of blister, jo fofole padi jaati, right? So that is what really happens, and that leads to dehydration. That is, person immediately starts getting the hypotension, blood pressure starts falling because of this. So over here, it is it is like water is completely different. My father could you please tell me this part? I know. Well, Mariam, this is like. We are on the twelfth, twelfth lecture on respiratory system, and today we are talking about pneumothorax. Did you join now? Uh, if pressure is high, air will try to flow out in any case. That's right. That's right. So this is what really happened. This is what really happening in this. So pressure inside the lung is high, so it will just right. It will go over here. Now this air, as it will be going, this will be going into this fluid, so it will literally dissect the whole thing, right? It will dissect the whole thing. So now the final result would be the chest is separate and the lungs they are separate. There is air in between. This is air which is in between, right? So obviously, when this thing happens, lungs they were as such interested in collapsing. And lung collapses. It was because of this intrapleural pressure which was keeping it open. Right? It was keeping it. Mariam, because you have joined right now, so even if you can find some things difficult, don't worry about it. We just plan that next week we'll be going for full revision. That would be on Thursday and Saturday. We'll be going for a high speed revision. And in case of any query, you can always send a mail. I incorporate those queries in your subsequent lectures. Ah, if you join now, yes, some things would be a bit difficult, but uh, 
very soon will be our next region would be cardiology very important so don't miss that in any case this would be all the lectures right? we'll be going for a high speed lecture it will be a bit fast but we'll be able to catch up okay so the rupture of that subpleural blab air enters into this intrapleural space and the result is lung collapse right? so lung collapse plus Plural space expands. This would be our most important point in radiology when we, we, we try to diagnose it. Right? You understand, right? Lungs, lungs would collapse. Lung, lung would collapse, and the plural space, which was barely seen, right, on our normal X-ray, so we don't even see it because it is such a thin space. The total fluid is five mm. Right? In the in the entire lung, it is, so it is so less. But now, because the air has entered, so it is like it has expanded. So this is these two findings. Our entire diagnosis will be based on these two findings. Okay. So over here, risk factors. Risk factors means you should know it in advance. When you will find that suddenly someone has got a new, when you look at that person, this person is tall, right? The height is more than six feet. This is very typical. No? He is young and tall, young, and thin. Male. And when you ask that, are you a smoker? Right? Smoking can cause subliminal blab. Now, this first thing, these things, you should suspect that when the person is more than six feet, six feet two inches tall, young, but very thin. Right? If you look at his teeth, right, so they will be crowded. Some of the structures you will immediately find that there is something wrong. This is a typical case for what is called as the Marfan syndrome. Marfan syndrome. In genetics, we'll be discussing it in full length. But say the things which you should at least know. This is a genetic disorder. Genetic disorder. Sometimes for the marriages, people say that Kundli Milao. A Korean says it. Yeah. So this is a Kundli Milao. Persons we should really match the chromosomal pattern. Chromosomal pattern, what is called as a karyotype. The reason is this is one of the diseases, what is called what is autosomal dominant. Autosomal dominant. Autosomal dominant means even if one parent has got this problem, the kids will be having this problem. So this means there are two types. One is autosomal dominant and second is autosomal recessive. Recessive means both the parents they should be having this problem, then the kid will be having. Otherwise, that kid would be the carrier, right? But when it is autosomal dominant, parent ko their kids will all be suffering from this. So this is what this is genetic disorder. It is a connective tissue disorder. It is connective tissue disorder. We'll be deviating from the topic slightly, but doesn't matter. So it is also related. So when we say genetic disorder, it is one of some gene, right? Some gene is having defect. So gene is defective. Just what is like a gene. So if this is this is a chromosome, right? short arm, long arm, short arm is called as the P, long, long arm is called as Q. And on that there are specific sections. These are the sections which are called as the gene. These genes, they are the specific sequence which will trigger specific type of proteins. Right? These are the proteins which will be used by heart, lung, blood vessels, tendon, cartilage, skin, eyes, everywhere. Right? So when this particular gene, this is a gene, this is a gene, it's called as the fibrillin. It is gene is called as the fibrillin. Fibrillin 1. And there are three types, but this is fibrillin 1. Also called as the FBN1. 
So this is that gene which is making those connective tissues. Now those connective tissues, they are making your body a proper body. If this connective tissue is, is not then because of that defective gene, FBN1, the elastic, elastic connective tissues, they are now faulty. So now you will find these things in our heart. You'll find this thing in lungs. And you'll find it in blood vessels, blood vessels, tendons, cartilage, right? cartilage, bones. Right? In all these areas, you'll find this connective tissue. It means if someone's gene is defective, it means everything would be affected. Right? So much so. So much so that this particular condition is which is present at birth. Right? It is present at birth right from the beginning because it is a congenital thing. When it is present at birth, but people come to know it is diagnosed many times by teenage. So how this person would really look like because he will be he might be your patient of many parts. So this is where the appearance. Right? It's not like that. So the typical typical face, right? that face is long, narrow face. Right? Try to visualize this picture. So that is the best method to learn. They have got, they are tall, but with long arms, unusually long arms and long legs. Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, if you can look at his picture, right, you find that he was extraordinarily long, like six foot four inch, and long arms, long legs, and leaf joints. They tend to dislocate. Mm. They tend to dislocate. Second, when such patient watch their feet, you will find they have got flat foot. In fact, flat feet, both of them. Right? Say this is like our big toe, and our that's how it really goes. So that's how, that's the arch because it gives you the grip on the ground. Interestingly, when we, we learn the foot, foot anatomy, you know, females, they wear long heels, those, those long heels. So because of that, calf muscles, they look very beautiful. But the thing is, it puts extra load on this. So later on in the life, if it is not properly taken care of, they might develop flat feet. When it is flat feet, that means they will find it extremely difficult to run. Right? Because then while running, it is this, this arch which is giving the grip. Right? So even in orthopedic, when we'll, we'll discuss about flat feet, flat foot, so many things. Okay. Another way I will identify their sternum, that would be protruded. If this much was not enough, there comes. The things like, say, in case of eyes, they develop cataract. They develop cataract. So, cataract is what? Say, this is this is the lens. Mind move the cataract, but this is the lens. Right? This lens is clear, right? So that so that over here it is properly focused on the retina and things like that. When there is denaturation of protein, so this lens it becomes white becomes white. So it becomes opaque. Light is not passing through it. That is what is called as the cataract. In Hindi it is also called as the motiyagi. Right? Motiya. So this cataract it develops them in early age. Same reason connective tissue. That is also a type of connective tissue. So that is not developed properly. So cataract develops much earlier. There is lens subluxation. If you are yeah, if it's your orthopedic um, ophthalmologic term, you'll find that the long patient has come and he's telling that or, or 
he, he out of this entire he can see only a portion of it you'll find that this lens right which is held by the suspensory ligament the lens which is held by suspensory ligament these suspensory ligaments once again they are the connective tissue so lens subluxates kesab jata hai lens so now it is unable to focus properly on the retina and that is what that is what you see in the marfan syndrome the worst case is this is the retina the most important of all right this retina gets detached right this retina gets detached then one what you always see is some uh, send a mail they will be ask few questions Send the history in detail. That is, is it occurring before food, after food, when you are playing, when you are running, or even when you are just sitting? It is happening. Right? Try, try to give me as many details as possible. I think the person who has sent her father's report. I'm sorry, I just saw it before before few minutes only. I'll I'll see that thing in a moment, right? and I'll reply by today. So then, this was the retinal detachment. The retinal. Okay, okay, you don't send that. Sure, I, I'll I'll see. I'll reply. So this is retinal detachment. Another thing is what is called as the glaucoma. Glaucoma in in ophthalmology. We were discussing this thing in jabardas detail. Reason only one. This is what is called as the silent beef. Of the eyesight, silent thief of that. Chupke se nazar chura le, dikhna bandh. But the blindness is it becomes inevitable. Blindness. One case, my lawyer, a right, very good friend of mine. About three months back, I I went. To his place, and uh, her mother was sitting. So she was she she served the coffee like this. It's Jordan Tedi girl. We can't see. Dekh nahi raha aapko ye kaat se. And the beta ab to age ho gaya. I said better. I checked, and the moment I touched the eyeball, I said this is raised intra intra optical pressure. This is the raised intraocular pressure, high intraocular pressure. Immediately, we we took her to the hospital. We tried everything, but her right eye. Start over. This is that was massive raised intraocular pressure, and it is. Sometimes in in glaucoma it can occur even without intraocular pressure also. But what it really needs to is retinal detachment. When the retina is detached, then you know that retinal detachment it's it's game is over. Right? It has to be treated instantly. Our optic nerve would be affected. So we are talking about Marfan syndrome. In case of heart, see the connective tissue disorders. Yeah, this thing will come. Cardiology, but the commonest thing what happens is aortic aneurysm. Aortic aneurysm is what this is the call of thick, very powerful art, very thick, nice, beautiful artery. What if, like that car tire, right? What we saw. What if if one of the wall drops? Now this is this is aorta. Yes, can yeah, yes. You are hundred percent right. It can occur in diabetes. They are they are the high risk patients. So this is this is aorta, right? So the way car cars a small portion the car tire small portion was bulged. What if if this occurs into this aorta? It's such a big artery when the bulge occurs, when there is pressure, if it bursts, right? If it bursts, then the death is inevitable. Immediate death. Jawaharlal Nehru. Right. He was having this aortic aneurysm. 
So this is when the wall gets thinner. Again, connective tissue problem. Because if the connective tissues are good, the, the wall will be kept fine. Similarly, there would be the wall problems. Wall problems. Multiple problems. So I'm just writing wall problems. Say in, in the heart, we have got those four important walls, right? Tricuspid wall, mitral wall. Then there is aortic wall and the pulmonary wall. The most dangerous mitral wall. Mitral wall. Because it is a bicuspid wall. Two. There are two cusps, right? This is what is called as the cusp, right? Two cusps. These two cusps, they are taking the maximum load because this is left atrium and this is left ventricle. So, left ventricle, when it compresses, it is actually generating the entire blood pressure and blood is thrown into the aorta and it goes into the entire body. But the back pressure, back pressure comes from this mitral wall. So, if this mitral wall, which has just two cusps, right? So, so the pressure would be on that and if the connective tissue disorder is there, they, they just flip open. That is mitral regurgitation. Blood starts going back. Rest of the wall, tricuspid wall, pulmonary aortic, they all are tricuspid. They have got three cusps. So when there are three cusps, right, they are like this. They are like this. So it gives much better protection. So these are the wall problems. Then what happens? In our heart, there is acid and AV mode. Even they are affected. So that leads to arrhythmia. See, so many things can happen. And all of them they can contribute to heart failure. And here comes our lungs. And in lungs, pneumothorax. Pneumothorax. Why? Blab. Right? One of the portion of the connective tissue of the heart is weak and then it has bulged. So now constantly the air is going and it is hitting. So every time lung is expanding and collapsing, expanding, collapsing, right? With every breath. It doesn't occur immediately, but if the person starts smoking, so then that smoking, that gas, as it will go, so it will start getting the inflammatory reactions. As it improves, as it, it worsens, one day that blab it gets burst, it, it gets open, and immediately it will start. Pneumothorax, okay. then it can lead to say asthma, right? Then emphysema and the COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Right? So, so many bronchitis, all, all those things we have. And then you'll watch their skin, and when you watch their skin, the skin quality is very bad. Valve, valve is, say these valves, they are like, actually the valves are like this. This is a cusp and then these are what are called as the called a tendon. So this is a cusp. cusp. And then they are attached with the muscles. So literally like from below, those cusps, they are, they are pulled. Right? But when these connected tissues, they are weak, so then that valve will go on the opposite side. So if I just draw, if I just draw, this is left atrium and left ventricle. So these walls, they would, when the when the blood tries to go back, right? Because from here it would be the aorta. So that is under pressure. So, no, Parkinji, they are different. Parkinji, they are different. Parkinji's, they are. This is the SA node. Then comes the AV node, and then the bundle of his, and then the fibers which are going into the ventricles, the nerve fibers. They are the Parkinji fibers. These are called as the corda tendini. They are called as the corda tendini. tendini. The cords which are made up of tendon, tendon like substances having the cords. So they are like that cam. Right? When, we, when we make a cam, so this is how it has it is pulled. So over here, this pressure, right, it will flip open. It is what is called as the mitral regurgitation. So when the left ventricle into the aorta, it now starts going back into the left hand. Right? Blood regurgitates up. So that is what really happens to this once. Okay. And skin, you will find that the skin quality is very bad. Now everyone knows the quality of your skin, it depends upon your entire metabolism. Because skin is one of the largest organ. Right? It is one of the largest organ. Heaviest is liver. But skin is an organ. 
So that's why over here, when the connective tissues are bad, so it leads to several stretch marks. Several stretch marks. So these are the things that when you see the patient, you, you can identify right, from these looks. So few questions if they are such. Treatment. Treatment of Marfan's Heart rate, it, it goes very high. Right? So that's why then stretch marks go. In this case, no, in this case, for my Marfan syndrome, so it is very difficult. No, they don't go. In fact, you need to take care of such patients right from the early age. Generally, gym stretch marks, gym stretch marks, we need to see the picture. Because if it has evolved, say normally it is the corneal layer, the top layer. But if, if it is a deeper one, so when, when the mark is like this and in fact it's got the surrounding edges, then it is very difficult. Why, why those marks even should develop? Start taking collagen. What is called as the marine collagen. Right? It is called as the marine collagen. It is bit expensive. It is like that one dabba costs you about 3000 rupees per mine. But it is celebrities they use it. That's why you will find that say, they take, because for them it is the bread and butter. They can, they, they do spend. There are some marine collisions which are, which are prohibitively high. I use the word prohibitive. Because 12,000 ka dhappa. So that is something very high. See, uh, all the boys, right? So many questions they have come up. And no worries. I'll, I'll take two minutes on this. Yes, 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 this is, this is, listen, 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 I got the points. If you are getting any of those marks, stretch marks, when you are, after you went to the gym, that means you are doing incorrect exercise, right, incorrect, show 100% incorrect exercise. It is, it is, when you do any of the exercise, give the sufficient time to that particular region. So, so that when you are doing the exercise, means kya bolo? If there is a good female, then you know, gym mein ah, chilla chilla ke matlab dumbbells maar. She is telling that who this, this fool is. You know? Ask any girl. No one is getting impressed by that. When the stretch marks are developing, that means person is trying to do overboard. Is trying to go overboard. Galat nahi hai, matlab, to go for the higher exercise, but there is a difference between higher weight, less reps, and less weight and higher reps. Hai na? <laughs> hai, whatever. But but this is this is what really happens. And and the most vital point is your body is important. Okay, ye sab stretch marks aa jate hain, fir jana so there is a method. When we'll be discussing that fitness session, remind me. We'll, we'll take this point. We'll take this point. Me? Yeah. I, I do have a good. I'll, I'll send you the picture. I'll show you the picture next time. Yes, yes. A full, full barbell. Wait. Well, well. 20, 20, 10. 50 kilogram on one side and 50 kilogram on other side. Yeah. Yes, for that. Hmm. For girls, the stretch mark depends on which region. Send a mail. All of you, just send me the mail, right? Wherever, because the solutions are different for everyone. So, I, I, I. so regarding this, quickly, this is the beta blocker. Right, beta blocker, you need to start for such patients right from the, the beta blocker are to be started right from the early age for this Marfan because you need to decrease the heart rate. Right? And if the patient is developing asthma, if he, if he is having the breath, he is becoming breathless, so then you need to go for calcium channel blocker. Right? 
sufficient for Warfarin syndrome. Right? So coming back to this, this is like a blab which was over here, right? And then the air has leaked into this pleural space, pleural space, and that leads to collapse. Now the technical part. This is like a channel which is which has now been connected to the air, right? Connected to the lung. So this is the lung. So when we say the pressure into the pleura, it would be equal to pressure in the alveoli. Right? Because they both are same. Right? They both are same. This, this has just opened a gate. So now the air which we breathe, that breathe, breathe air is also going over here. And then when we exhale, so this particular air will go back also. You know? So that's how it will keep on going. Free flowing air. So the key word is because of free flowing air. Right? Between so free flowing air is in and out, in and out. It's free flowing air. So that's why that's the important point. The pleural pressure is equal to pleural alveoli. Uh, I mean, I mean the pressure in the alveoli. Pressure in the pleura is equal to pressure in the alveoli. Right? So that's why it is not making things first. If it happens right, gradually, so you'll be having time to treat this particular patient. Now see what happens when in case of there is tension in the okay? In case of Tension pneumothorax. There is a progressive built up of air into the space. So this is progressive built up of air. Into the space. There can be two things which can really occur in this. Any type of injury. So it is that injury, and we'll see what type of injury is. But that injury has led to the keyword unidirectional, unidirectional flow. In this, stick this. Say that's the lung. That's the lung. That's the pleura. Gunshot. The bullet went in and it broke this, right? Right? It broke. And that now this tissue, now that tissue is, is, is like this, right? The tissue has been broken and that flap is now, now hanging like this. So this portion, so the bullet went in and it broke. Right? So this is this broke. So here it is the atmosphere. Here it is the atmosphere, the outside, and this one is the pleura. Right? So what would happen? Bahar say air immediately it will start going in. Right? The air is going in. But as the air would try to go out. Right? This particular flap will act like a wall, bulb. It will get closed. So the air which is inside, the air which is inside, then once again when the person breathes, right? When the person breathes, this flap would come back. Again, the new air would come. Right? New air would come and it would fill up this space. And and when when the person would try to breathe out, so that the pressure changes. Close. So over here it is acting like a wall since the unidirectional wall. Unidirectional wall. So this is when there is chaku, right? Stabbing, gunshot, or when, when there is an impact fracture. All these things they lead to breakage of tissue, and this is one way. Ulta, reverse. It can occur like this also. Here is the lung, right? Here is the pleura, and now it breaks from inside. So over here, 
That's the lung, and the tissue is over here. Tissue is over. So when the person breathes, this particular air goes into the pura. But as he tries to exhale, it will take this position. This flap will take this position. So in this way, so this way, it will keep on mounting. It will keep on mounting the pressure. So in both these conditions, whether the air is coming from outside into the pura or the, in the air, which is which is from lung, it is going into the pura. In both these cases, there is increased pleural pressure. There is increased pleural pressure. When there is increased pleural pressure, this is progressive. This is increasing. So that's what is called as the tension pneumonitis. Technically speaking, what would happen? The structures, two of the important structures. So here we can can we write what the statement which we write about over here that the pleural pressure is equal to alveolar. But here it would be totally different. The pleural pressure. The pleural pressure is much, much, much more than the alveoli pressure. And when this thing occurs, imagine on one side of the of the lung. Now this is a chest. This is a chest. This is a diaphragm. That's a diaphragm over here. Here is the heart. Let's say there is pneumothorax over here. That means the pressure which is increasing, so it will start pushing the structures on the opposite side. Yes, it can it can occur in car accident when steering gets stiff. Yes, it can. It can happen. Right? So when it so it keeps on pushing the structure on the opposite side. So trachea, right? Trachea, which which we have we know how to see it, right? The, the trachea, we, we can see it in our X-ray, heart, right? They all are pushed, pushed away from the affected side. So if there is this side, right? If there is a left-sided pneumothorax, so it will push it on the right side. If it is pneumothorax is on the right side, it will push it on the left side. But it will happen. Still the most dangerous thing now comes. Right? Which is which is technically and in an exam will be asked many times this question. For this we go back slightly towards the, whatever the anatomy part. Here is the right atrium. In right atrium, from below, there goes the inferior vena cava. Correct. From top comes the superior vena cava. Correct. Superior vena cava is made by both the sides, both the sides, right? This is what is called as the left brachiocephalic trunk. Brachiocephalic trunk. And it is this brachiocephalic trunk because these are the veins, right? So they are coming. They are coming. So as such, its journey starts from here. This is the left axillary vein. This left axillary vein will continue, right? And it becomes the left subclavian, subclavian vein. And that thing would be landing over here, right? As a left brachiocephalic trunk. But left brachiocephalic trunk, there would be two major tributaries, one which would be the external jugular vein, the external jugular vein and this one is called as I am just writing IGA, this is internal jugular, same way over here, this is internal jugular vein on the, on the right side, on the right side and the right side is external jugular vein. So, from all these areas, the blood is coming and it is landing in this. But see, these are the bichari veins. Veins are weak, right? Veins, the walls of the veins, walls, they are thin because there is less pressure. And as such, in superior vena cava, there is no wall because the blood is just falling. It is blood is just falling into, into the right atria. So all the way blood which is falling straight away into the right atrium. And when, when the compression increases, this is the pressure point. 
this is the pressure point inferior vena cava which is draining the blood from the lower limb abdomen pelvis right so that that starts getting compressed okay what happens now they are compressed this is compressed so superior vena cava compressed inferior vena cava compressed what comes to right atrium less blood to the right atrium less blood to the right atrium so here goes the right ventricle right ventricle is getting less blood right ventricle is getting less blood so that means less blood is going to the lungs right that less blood which is going into the lungs jaise taise karke somehow it is oxygen is provided and it goes into the left atrium why are those pulmonary veins from left atrium via mitral valve it goes into the left ventricle from left ventricle this much small amount of blood that is pushed into the aorta right that is pushed into the aorta now as such the pressure is less right so this is what leads to hypotension hypotension there is decreased blood pressure because the amount of blood which is getting pushed is less who is affected brain 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 tells i need right so when when it goes up right from the aorta right there comes a common carotid from common carotid internal carotid that internal carotid and then there are vertebra it right? from both the sides they form and they form basilar that is all what form circle of willis the circulation of the brain everyone affected so there is hypotension and then the person starts getting dizziness the person starts getting dizziness so message comes from the brain to help with rest of the system jinka jo hona ho you increase the heart rate right so heart is told by the central nervous system and then there is increased heart rate so that is what we call as the tachycardia right tachycardia then you get these symptoms you check the blood pressure systolic is going below 50 right diastolic uh, systolic is going below 80 diastolic is going below 50 alert and and then you see the heart rate is shooting to 120 130 140 persons person is going towards shock right and then you just see and you identify what would really happen it is this these are the jugular veins right jugular veins these are the veins which you can really see these are the neck veins normally you won't be able to see the neck veins right? during exercise right what is so during exercise yes at times you see the see those veins right and if you if you just breathe or you are breathe and you do some maneuver to it you can see but over here these are the massively dilated right tortuous waves tortuous waves right and it is but obvious na the blood which is going yahan pe you have blocked this right so the blood has to go up and and this will lead to tortuous jugular veins dilated veins in the neck so that's what you see dilated neck veins and the word which you will be using is engorged they are called as the engorged neck veins thick thick neck veins this this you will get and technically speaking if the patient is in icu so then you can measure the intrajugular pressure right which is called as the jugular venous pressure so there is increase in jugular venous pressure right jugular venous pressure which is called as the jv increase jugular venous pressure this is the classical presentation classical this is how we really look and that's how we identify and now the patient is going in shock we talked about history so there would be history h o means history of so if there is history of fracture of rib fractured rib so in fractured rib what would be the direction of air the ribs are inside they have peeled the lungs they have they have penetrated they have stabbed into the lungs so it is inside so now the air which is in lungs it is going into the neural space correct neural space so what we understood was that the injury is from inside right that's right 
right? Injuries from inside. Or if it is like a gunshot, right? Or if it is stab. So in all these things, air, which is from atmosphere, correct? Which is from atmosphere, it is going into the pool. So in both the cases, the pleura is collecting more air. You have got just some time, right? Your stethoscope is there. This is the time when you need to see your stethoscope. On physical examination, don't waste time when this is like whenever the patient is breathless, don't waste time, right? Everything true, inspection, palpation, percussion, auscultation, all clear. First thing first, just put the stethoscope. You find that you find that there is injury. Put the stethoscope, and you will find that there is decrease or no breath sounds. You know the initial initial stages. I I told you about that. Start using your stethoscope. Start using your stethoscope so that you listen to the normal heart sound. And then what you do is you put the stethoscope on your father's chest or mother's chest and then say, okay, take deep breath. So when they breathe, you hear those sounds. They are called as the breath sounds. Your ear should be trained to hear normal breath sounds because over here there won't be any breath sound. Reason? Here it is. This is the chest. Now the lung has collapsed, right? So in this region, there are no airways. All the bronchioles, right, all the alveoli, they are now compressed into this area. At the same time, they are compressed. So there is very less air which is going inside. This area, that is the total shan. Absolutely silent, right? So over here, in this area, right? there are no airways. So here, there would be very decreased because whatever the breath sounds which you are hearing, you are hearing from the opposite side, right? So that's what you are getting. And this is... This is what we get. First thing, decreased breath sounds. The second, this is for percussion. Percussion means, you take this finger, right? it is always a long finger, and when you, when you tap, I don't know if you can hear it. Right? When you hear it, this is like if the inside, if there is tissue, so it will be tough sound. Right? It will be but when there is only air, so it would be as if there is resonance. It is called as hyper resonance. To test this thing, kya karna? take a balloon, right? Apna normal balloon, right? Inflate it. Inflate it, a balloon, right? and then put the finger on this and then tap it. Right? Even SAB, if you if you remember right, when you do the dum. That is what is called as the hyper resonance sound. Exactly that type of sound is heard when the patient is having pneumothorax. You just do it once, twice, and you know that it is like. So this is how one one should really know it. What would be the treatment before we straight away go for? I skipped the radiology part because now we're watching that treatment. The first, first, if it is tension pneumothorax. Boldly, Bindas, take one needle and just push it inside. And immediately, um, that sound will come. Whoosh, sound will come because the, that air will start es escaping. And the person would, in seconds, will start feeling comfortable as the lung gets expired. I'll show you the cases. So that is what is called as the needle, needle decompression. In needle decompression, It should not happen that now the patient is, is fine and then he tells his right? that should not happen. Right? What I am trying to tell is here is one rib, here is the second rib, right? And those ribs are there. So it is important that at what point are you pushing? Are you pushing, right? These are the ribs, right? This, this is one rib, this is the second rib, and in between is the intercostal space, you are supposed to push the needle, where will you push? 
Where will you push? This is the space. Where will you push? I'm giving you three options. One, two, three. Will you put it in one? Will you put it in two? Will you put it in three? This two is out of question. Right? You are exactly in between. So, so two is out of question. So it is just the answer between one and three. Whether you will be doing it in one or three. Okay. Uh, so three, three one, one. Mm -hmm. So what they are saying. Where will you push the needle? That was the point. Okay, wait. This lower portion, wait, this lower portion it is sharp, and that is the portion where there is van, vein, artery, and nerves. They are present. Whenever you want to push anything, any instrument, it has to be, it has to be on the upper part of the rib. Or the lower lower portion of intercostal space. This is intercostal space. Itna dhyan rakho. Never ever you will be putting any instrument. Ah, I told you earlier. Never ever you have to put any of the instrument. Because it is like let's say there is an emergency. Right? Even if you have done any of this damage, no one would bother. You have saved life. But what if, if you are supposed to take some biopsy? Biopsy ke liye itna bada fir lapda. That is not good. So this upper part, this is the rib. The lower part of the rib, lower, remember again, right? The lower part of the rib that is holding vein artery now. Vein artery now. That should never be touched. So that's the reason that whenever you palpate the palpate the rib and in between, yahape, this area is soft. Right? That is the only portion that you will be inserting any of the instrument. So palpate the rib and immediately above the rib, boldly let the lead will not be damaging any. So this would be the correct answer. You do remember this. Right? So that is what is called as a needle compression. And then this is like this thing can be done anywhere. This chest tube, you require a it is a special tube, right? Chest tube placement. I'll show you the chest tube also. Chest tube placement, it is with a valve. So here is the pleura. Here is the pleura, here is the atmosphere, and this is a valve. So air can go from pleura to outside only. It cannot come back. So this is this is like a valve. And, and with this chest tube placement, I'll show you a case. Within minutes, how patient it goes. Ah, three was right, obviously. That's right. So now let's start with our view of the X-rays. No guessworks. This is a completely normal X. This was just to show that how a normal would be. And today I have put images to full full page. So, so when when you get this PDF. You can see them very properly. No, no, no heavy smoker. Yeah, totally normal. This is a normal one. Why normal? So that we see that this is the reference. First thing first. That's our tracheal shadow. Correct trachea. Right. So this one because there is air, so we can see that thing very clearly. Properly centered. All good. They are the lungs, right? The lungs, in case of lung field, watch all these, right? All these bronchovascular markings, they are seen so clearly. These are all bronchovascular markings, right? We have already talked about it. So, now we start with the case, right? The first case, see this. This is massive. Can you really see the difference between this portion and this portion? This portion, this, this left sided, the left sided, it is looking crisp clean, right? Let me zoom this thing. See, there is no lung tissue. This is pure air, air in the pleural cavity or the pleural space. Right. 
Where is the lung? That lung is fully collapsed lung. See, this is the border. That much is the lung. Bus. So this is collapsed lung. In fact, fully. Fully collapsed lung. The, the pneumothorax is so high that it has pushed the trachea. See the trachea, it has been pushed. Right? This is how the trachea is formed. Trachea pushed. Not only that, the worst of the cases, can you really see this is the, the right heart border? Even right heart border is pushed right? because it, otherwise the right heart border is over here. And the lung is, and the, and the heart is like this. No, but it has been pushed. So, right heart border pushed. Border pushed. And one of the another finding is see the dome of diaphragm that has been pushed below. This is the left diaphragm depressed. So it makes total sense, right? Because the tubular pressure is so high, it is increasing so that it has pushed. The diaphragm down, it has pushed the heart on the opposite side, it has pushed the trachea, lung totally collapsed. This diagnosis, right, there can be nothing else but this is tension. This is tension. Right? This is. See how to see if the lung is collapsed? That's what I said. Watch this, right? Can you see these bronchovascular markings? Just watch this area and watch this area. Just a glass, just like the crystal clean. Nothing is seen. See, and I zoomed it. See this, this area and see this area. Got it? No, no bronchovascular markings. Kuch bhi nahi hai. Left is darker, lighter. Wo bhi darker, lighter. Darker, you can say, but no. Watch for the bronchovascular markings. Technically. Right? No BVMs. See, there is some small amount of tissue here. Right? In this, this much region. But otherwise, watch for this. Watch this. This is not a single. And, and watch this. These are the all bronchovascular markings. In which there is air and there is blood. And there is no lung tissue. So that's why when you put the stethoscope over here, right, it will be totally silent. You won't be hearing anything. So this is first case number one. Watch this of the second. I want to show you something very specific in this. No need to say. What if we do percussion in hyper resonance? Beyond doubt, absolute hyper resonance. See, this case, how wonderful, right? These are very easy cases, right? but you can see. I, I already know this. Can you see the border? That is the border of the lung. This is not fully, fully compressed. Partially compressed, but still, can you see the border? Can you see the border? All right, border of the lung. Yes, it is the area. So now I'm not. I I'll just draw this thing so that then you can understand. So that is lung border. It means this is the case of pneumothorax. Oh, patient was not that much severely breathless. Was breathless, but gradually his breathlessness was increasing. When this extra was taken at that time, the breathlessness were not very high. Now, this is one of the very crucial uh, finding post-graduation level, but good to know. This is hilum, right? This is hilum.
this is the lung and the point from where the bronchus and the right and those bronchopastic vessels the primary bronchus when they are entering this is like a mouth of the lung through that all the structures are entered so that is high level you draw a line and this is the lung border and this is the outer margin if this distance is more than 2 cm so that means this is a large pneumothorax even if the patient has not developed yet the symptoms immediately start to put put the that chest tube because this thing can increase rapidly the person can be breathless any time so this is one of the important signs at the level of hilum and when the x-ray is in front of you and at the level of hilum if you see that this is more than 2 cm that means you are dealing with a large pneumothorax. This is slightly tricky. It is slightly tricky. Straight away the look itself is telling something. Can you really make it out that this patient must be tall, thin, right? See the looks itself. And, and very carefully, if you see, let me zoom this thing. This is a typical case of a pical pneumothorax. See, the boundary of the lula is going to See this part. This is what is called as the apical pneumothorax. This is the system border. This is what is called as the apical. It's very, this is not an easy case to diagnose. And basically, it is, this is a Marfan syndrome. The patient is tall, young, like thin, and the typical structure. And so, this is, this is what I'm watching. In the second, you will come to know that yes, this area, right, this area is. It's pneumothorax, but no doubt about it. this. This is large pneumothorax. But if you take it like this, that here is here is the hilum, and, and then this is less than two centimeters. No, when it is like focused, when it is like this. Somehow the gas has expanded, that air has expanded, so that it has pushed the lung down. Like it has pushed the lung down. Our Korean wala body. So when the lung has been pushed down, that rule of hilum won't be applicable. So this is a large compress, which that lung has been pushed down. Lung compressed downwards. This. In this, once again, can you can you really see this very fine? I I've, I've drawn only half of the line. This line is extending all the. In radiology, it, many times it happens, so then we find ha ha ha. So that's why you need to develop this. 
as many times as you'll see this x rays this is what is called as the subtle or the small nucleus what what is See, which side? Right side. Correct. This is the right side. And in this, beyond doubt, you are watching that right? this is the border. Because see, this area, nothing. You are khali. This is a massive. And now over here, that's the high level. And when you draw it, this is so far more than two segments. The body chest cover. This is massive. This is massive. And that's why in this, that's the right heart border. That's the left heart border. Left heart border, kitna dur chala gaya. Right? Ah, left atrium is straight. It is because it has been pushed. It has been pushed. So heart is pushed. Right? Heart is pushed. So that is one. Correct? Anything else you see this? In this? A very classical thing. The diaphragm is pushed down. Now normally, right sided diaphragm is up because here is the liver. Hai. Right? This is the area of liver. The liver is a big organ. Tough organ, so that's why the right sided diaphragm is always higher as compared to left one. Two reasons one, the liver is in the abdomen, so it will lift the right diaphragm, and on the left diaphragm, heart is sitting, so it will push it down. So, situation is whenever you draw, you draw it like this, heart is like this because the presence of liver over here, here so they both are at the same level. So, that clearly indicates that we have got the Right dome depressed because of the pressure. So these many findings. Now do the trachea. Right? See the trachea. It is quite central. Right? Trachea is central. So don't be confused by that. That a trachea is in center. No problem. Gastric bubble. This is gastric bubble. That is the gastric bubble. So here my point is that don't be say it like that trachea is central, so all good. It's not a heart has been pushed on the opposite side. Dome is down. Patient, this thing, it will happen like here is this is the location. This is the location of IVC. This is the location of SVC. Supervena cover infinite. Both of them will be compressed. When they are compressed, this patient can die at any time. So this is like patient can you take the blood pressure and you find that it is less. Don't wait much. Right? Straight away, push the key. Right? Because it can rapid death can occur any time. Watch this patient. See this patient. Same patient. And taken at an interval of just 10 minutes. What was done? Here it is the here it is that this one. That is the chest tube. And then there is a wall on the top. <laughs> There is a wall on the top. So this tube is inserted the moment that tube is put into this region. In this region. Right? Immediately the air would be picked out. Right? And as the air is taken out, the lungs, with every breath, that the lung will keep on expanding. And see what happens. There is almost the entire lung has been recovered. There is only a small portion. There is a small black black ridge over here. This is there is only a mile until on one the matrix. There is only small this much space has been left out. That's just the patient is fine. 
So this is what is called as the chest tube in C2. In C2 that means in body, the same patient. Here it is. A CT scan was done. This is another patient. The CT scan is this is what is called as the transfer section. TS or the transfer section. Transfer section. So here the section is taken. So this means that this is the anterior portion. This is the anterior over here. This is the pneumocortis. You can see that. See over here, if you zoom this thing, you can see all the markings. See when the lung is normal, right? See the markings you, you see it. Right? Very, very clearly, all these markings. What about this? Erase this. Erase this. See Kali, nothing, nothing is there. The lung has been compressed. That's the border of the lung. This is pneumothorax. On CT scan, the findings are very easy to find. Uh, a very, very nice case. So it is like an exam. It's but can you really find out the see this? See this? Right. See how I, I just put the arrows. Eight. So now you should be able to see. Yes, that's the lung ball. But, yeah, huh. so this question should have come. That's right. Till this point, though, when we were watching, they were like sharp. Lung borders, they were sharp. Over here, it is not sharp. It is a teda mila, right? Right here. Then, then this. Then this. Then this. Correct. That's how it is getting formed. So this part to be new, that this is now the morax, no doubt about it. But what are these here, Ulta? These, these are all bulas, bula, they are called as the bula. In lungs, at times, those big bula, they start up giving, and then they burst. So this is how they will look like. Now the best, best thing to see is the CT scan. I'm sure. One another thing is, say this is where the pneumothorax is there. Right? So this is where the air is there. Here, 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 here. It's all pneumothorax. Right? So outer door. Ek bar pata chala khush ho gaye. Yes, yes, diagnosed, diagnosed. Of course, there is pneumothorax on the opposite side also. See the lung border. Right? Here it is. This is a case of bilateral. Very rarely it happens. Right? But it can happen. Right? So this is a case of bilateral. Okay. In the initial stages I told you, watch all corners. So similarly, there are some golden sentences. Like whenever you diagnose pneumothorax, watch opposite side also. Possibility of bilateral pneumothorax can, can be there. It's, it's not that much common, but it can occur. No, no, when lungs are in this shape, it is not bilateral. It is it is like it has occurred in both the on both the sides. Lungs ka shape to here it is because of bola. In this case, it is because of here it is same patient. Now here is a patient, here is a patient, so on CT scan you can have, you can have one what is called as the transverse section, second what is called as the coronal section. So this is, huh, this is CT scan, this is CT scan, coronal section, it is called as CS, coronal section. So as if you are taken the slices of the body like this. Correct. 
So that's why you are watching. So all these you can can you see it is one two multiple means I mean they are in dozens. Chote chote to kitne? That's the speciality of CT scan where you can watch every Buddha image. On both the sides it is by nature. And then where is our our pneumothorax? The air which is surrounding. Pulmonary fibrosis. This was this is this is like over here, that's the heart border, and over here there are multiple pathologies. It is not the pulmonary fibrosis, but uh, there is consolidation of Okay, but first take this over here also you can see that. And that's why the drain has been put. This is the chest tube. The chest tube. Chest tube has been put and it was dry. It must have been done in emergency. Okay. So this is see when we when we see that see this is the bula, right? This is a bula, this is a bula, bula. Right. See big ones, right? all these are big bullas. And lung border always lung border is to be seen. Here is the lung border. See this one. Correct. And the black part after that, so this one, this one, that's our pneumothorax. Right. See the lung border. So whatever this outer portion which you are watching, see the lung border. So this this part, this part is pneumothorax. Right. See over here, the must. See, this is the lung border. So this outer part that is the pneumothorax. Now it is huge one. This is the lung border. This is new. And that's why the tube has been kept. So this is a coronal section. All right. So that's it for today. Thank you so much. On Saturday, we'll be taking the what now? We have got option plural infusion or pulmonary edema. These are the two very fantastic topics. Ah, Pushte or her class may give us some and I give you the answer also. We will we'll take the USM. But pehle ye USM will take the class. Plural effusion is when the fluid gets collected into. Ha, chalo, let's we'll take plural effusion. Okay? Ab tak to air. What if now the fluid comes in? What if the pus comes in? What if the blood comes in? We will take plural effusion. Next time we will take that. And then we will take the pulmonary. All right, thank you. It's always a pleasure. Uh, yes, I'll I'll surely see that. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you.